All right, so welcome back to the construction engineering section of the civil FE exam review. In this video, we're gonna be looking at project controls. And so I want to go ahead and dive into the practice problems. All right, so number one says, an activity node schedule is shown below with task and activity durations and days identified below. Okay, the duration uh, of the critical path in days is most nearly what? All right, so let's first start with our couple of step series where we go through uh, what we're, the information that we're given. Um, so we're given the days day duration of each task, okay? And we want to find the critical path. All right, are there any formulas that we need? No. So if we go to critical path method, We go to construction. All right. So apparently, I don't know how to, I guess my search isn't working. So, but I'm pulling up all this um, to show you that the construction um, section of this it does not tell you uh, what what is what the formula is for CPM. So, some of this information is interesting, but for uh, like CPM, as you can see, CPM precedence, it doesn't really tell you what what that is. So what is the critical um, path method, right? Or the critical path? Well, the critical path is, um, let's just say prior knowledge. So we need prior, prior knowledge. So the critical path, or CP, is the longest path that the project can take, all right, according to these durations, right? So I know these numbers are a little bit small to see, um, but we're going to go ahead and get our critical path. So, um, on each one of them, we're just gonna choose a route, right? So at task A, you only, you start at task A, right? So the next, once we get to task B, which one would we choose, task B or task C? Well, the longest path would be, I would be choosing to go to four, right? So um, CP, is equal to the duration. So we got six days so far, and then the next longest path, our longest duration is four days. And then what would be the next path, All right? Well, we can only choose one. And that's gonna be uh, five days. So, and then, uh, the next path is already chosen for us as well. With that being four days. And then we end up at H, which is two. Oops. Oh, 
plus two. All right, so what do we get for our total? Well, for your total, you should get um, 21 days. Or B. All right, let's look at number two. All right, so it says, which of the following does not describe total float? All right, so what are we given? We're not given anything. We don't have any variables, right? What are we trying to find? Uh, outlier. Um, or not float. Total float. Okay. What are the formulas we need? Well, we we definitely need a formula, but it's not really clear, right? So I would say that this thing I highlighted in blue, we could say we need that, right? But in this particular example, we're not given any nodes and we're not given any visuals to to kind of tell us anything, right? So that's not going to help us. So what is float? We need we we definitely need to have some prior knowledge. So what is float? Float is the difference um, between the amount of time that it could take versus it actually takes. So float is basically the difference between how long it is supposed to take versus how long it takes. Okay, so for example, if, uh, let's just say you're supposed to be studying for this test for um, 90 days, right? And, uh, supposed. Uh, and the actual time it takes you is only 80 days. We can say that the float Does that look horrible? Looks a little bad to me. So we'll start over. Okay. So we'll say 80 days. And so the float would equal 90 minus 80 or 10 days. All right. Okay, so similar to that, um, let's look at our answer choices and see if there's one that makes makes sense. All right, so total flow equals a late start minus a early start. Okay, so that's the difference in how long it, so yes. One is a yes. Total flow is a uh, late finish minus an early finish. Yes, difference in um, timing. 
it's one's early, one's late. Um, which gives us some room, right? Uh, total float is the total number of time that a task can be delayed without delaying the project's completion date. So, yes. So, similar to the example that we did prior to this one, right? Where some task, just look at it. Like, some for task A, all right? Some tasks may take the full four days. I meant for task B, right? It may take the full task for a task B and it may be um, four days, right? The duration of that. But for task D, it may be only three. So um, basically, it's the amount of time that a task can be delayed. So some can be delayed to give you a few days a little bit of wiggle room um but the whole the whole project should be done within 21 days right so if these tasks are taking longer and something gets done early and then something gets done late but you're not able to reach that 21 days then there's a problem so this one is good um so total flow equals late finish minus late starts that is going to be our answer because it does not describe total float so there's no room right um for error so this one d is our answer right if you're starting late and you're finishing late on everything all right you don't have any wiggle room you don't have any float um so D. All right, let's go to number three. All right, this one says, which of the following is not a good strategy to mitigate construction projects experience experiencing a shortage of construction materials? All right, so we'll quickly go through this one. Given, not applicable don't have any variables find a bad strategy uh when you're experiencing uh a shortage When a shortage occurs okay um formal is needed not applicable all right so um what's a bad strategy having one supplier if i'm having a shortage of construction materials and i only have one supplier i think that's a bad strategy all right so i would say that's a bad strategy uh, advanced planning I would say that's probably a good strategy. That's not going to be my answer. Alternative materials. That means I have more than just one type of material. So um, even if I'm experiencing a shortage, I'll have alternatives to help me out. Flexible contractual agreements. So if I have flexibility, I can change and move how I need to, to get the project done. Right. So uh, A is going to be our answer for this one. And um, just in simple terms, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. And that's what this is kind of going through. So this concludes this section um, of the construction engineering uh, review. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be looking at some construction estimating.